Personal alignment is one of those things that can make or break your success in any fitness and strength endeavor. And the same especially goes for your physical alignment because so much of your strength and potential injury depends on how well you can have force transfer through your body. Martial artists have known this for years because you get your wrist in the slight misalignment or any joint for that matter, and it doesn't take a whole lot of force to cause pain and injury. But if you have good alignment in those same joints, you can handle a lot more force and you're perfectly fine. And one of the best ways to learn about having better total body alignment is with these two key isometric exercises. Now for these exercises, we'll be using my handy dandy World Fit ISO Trainer, which is one of the most efficient and simplest and easiest to use isometric devices on the market. I'll put a link down below if you want to check it out, but you can use uh, towels, bed sheets, yoga belts, martial arts belts, anything that you can kind of get your hands on if you don't have one of these, but this is definitely by far the best and easiest one to use, particularly because of the handles and the easy adjustability. But nonetheless, the first of these two exercises is the isometric lunge, and uh, it's sort of, sort of a deadlift, I guess we could almost say, but uh, we take the handles roughly about a foot width, so the handles are just below the knee. We're gonna lean all of our weight onto that front leg as much as possible, packing the shoulders down and back, engaging the lats, and driving the back knee up off the floor, and you're basically trying to just stand up from this position. Don't let your hips come up, but what this is doing is allowing you to engage your hips for stability. So a lot of times when people first do this, they're kind of wobbling all over the place. And you're also having force along your entire posterior chain, your whole back, arms, shoulders, hips, basically everything you need to be strong and stable along the backside of your body is engaged here. You can kind of feel like you're doing a bit of a row and holding for about five to 10 seconds on each side. Make sure you're getting in good position before you do it. You don't wanna just kinda of jump into it haphazardly. Get into a good position, make sure your handles are level and drive on up. Glute activation, lats. Shouldn't feel like this is in any of your joints. It's all in the muscles. Quads, hamstrings, calves, lats, biceps, back, all of your pulling muscles along your entire body. And again, five to 10 seconds, about two or three times each would get the job done. And then the second exercise is this standing overhead press. So for this, we're going to stand on the strap about shoulder width apart or so, or where you feel comfortable. You're gonna be more stable with a wider stance, less stable with a more narrow stance, and adjusting the handles so that your Pressing right about eye level with the handle, maybe just a hair higher. Again, adjust these things for personal preference and what feels best for your body. But we have our shoulders are pulled back tight. Glutes are engaged, abs are engaged. This is all about allowing you to have force transfer up the entire length of your body without any sort of weird arcing of the lower back pinching of the back, creating stability throughout your entire body while driving up and keeping your shoulders very, very stable. Don't have your elbows out, winging out like this. Elbows are ever so slightly in front of you. Some people will go directly in front, which is fine too. But we want to avoid this kind of scenario. Abs are engaged, glutes are engaged. You don't feel like you're using all of the muscles in your body. This is not just merely a shoulder press, same kind of deal, where you're applying force for about five to 10 seconds, longer if you really want to challenge the endurance of the muscles, whatever hand position feels comfortable for you. And again, you shouldn't feel like it's creating any stress or strain in any of the major joints of the body. You can do this on one leg if you want to have further hip and abdominal and core stability challenges. Of course, you'd have to use a shorter strap for that. Again, very easy to adjust on the ISO trainer. And if you wanna also create a little bit more of some stability challenge in your shoulders, you can go with one higher and one lower 
and as you apply force, it's gonna make you feel like you're trying to kind of upset your apple cart. And it's the fighting of that instability that makes your whole body resilient. Now, just those two exercises alone will do a lot to make your entire body more resilient. But one thing that I do recommend folks try in the name of engaging your back better, because one of the biggest challenges we often face is being able to really engage the lats and pack the shoulders. And for that, I recommend the simple seated isometric row. Feet are close together. Handles are roughly about mid thigh, wherever you feel comfortable with that. What you're gonna do to set up is roll the shoulders down and back. I'm lifting my chest up nice and high. You don't wanna be hunched up. So I feel like I'm driving force down towards my tailbone and I'm essentially pulling like a row. Now the key with making this work is to ensure you have a lot of adduction in your lats. Lots of times we think of the lats as being a wide muscle, flaring things out, but they actually work primarily the opposite direction. We want to feel like we're squeezing inwards, like you're squeezing lemons in your armpits, or like you're trying to drive your elbows back so you're trying to touch them. Play around with your hand position, whatever you feel comfortable with. And again, you can have different angles that you're working with. Driving shoulders down and back, making sure all of the muscles in your back and your pull chain are working. You don't want to feel like it's isolated anywhere. So my shoulders, my biceps, my grip, my lats, traps, everything's working. And if you feel like there's a difference, like, oh, I feel it on my left side, but not so much my right side, just kind of reset shift things around a little bit and see if you can't get those muscles to wake up so you've got better alignment throughout your entire back. All three of these exercises are great for warming up before any general strength training that you're utilizing to make sure you've got good alignment in your body and muscle activation or as a therapeutic way to wake up the muscles and strengthen yourself roughly two, three times a week. But you really can't mess this one up with the programming. Just get it in however you can, whenever you can, how much you like, and you're gonna find that everything about your alignment that keeps you safe and resilient just kind of automatically happens. It's one of the best things about isometrics. Check out these videos here for more ways to implement these in a standard dynamic isometric workout. Let me know if you have questions down below in the comments. Thank you very much for watching. Be fit and live free.